Alright guys, Touchcraft back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. With some very interesting scrim results coming out last night, Sledgehammer also seem to have decided and made up their mind as to which maps they might be bringing back here in Call of Duty Vanguard. One of them is certainly not what the competitive Call of Duty community would like to have seen. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, it's the best thing you can do. Top this channel reach new people. And please consider subscribing as well if you have not yet already. Firstly, this from Crone, well actually Los Angeles Grillers, announced that Spy Spart is going to join as their substitute player. We looked yesterday at some of the subs that have not yet been announced. Spart was part of the starting roster for LAG back in the Modern Warfare season in 2020. Didn't really perform all that well, and um, a lot of people have said as a result of that, that's kind of why he now finds himself stuck in the challenger side and not getting a spot back on a pro team. So credit to LAG bringing him back, to be honest, because I think a lot of people would say he's definitely one of the greatest talents in the challenger side, but just because he had kind of had his chance, blew it, you could argue. Like, um, therefore, he was kind of stuck down there. So LNG are giving him another go. I think this is definitely a good move to be honest for their organisation because you've got to make sure the starting roster is always on their toes to actually perform at the highest possible level getting pushed by someone on their substitute bench. And Spot I think can be a good guy to do that. So yes, they confirm a substitute player for the upcoming season. Do LAG. Definitely some other ones still to be confirmed over the coming weeks I am sure. This then let's dive into in terms of which maps could be coming back. So there was some look into the code last night I guess on the PC version of the game and they found um, well some things indicating some potential new maps coming through in the upcoming uh, weeks, I suppose. One of them indicates USS Texas. Now, I believe the in-game thing is like MP underscore Texas, like a multiplayer map called Texas. Now, um, look, I'm not sure. I think back in the World War II days, it was called something different. It was called like MP underscore Battleship. But the guy looking into this seemed to believe, like uh, with decent clarity, that it is going to be USS Texas. Now, um, of course, look, I don't understand what they're thinking here. USS Texas, in my opinion, is the most frustrating map I've ever played on from a competitive perspective. Like, there's plenty of good maps, right? Just saying says that they could have brought back Modern Warfare 3, Advanced Warfare, even World War 2. If you're just going to bring back maps from World War 2, think about, okay, a London Docks, maybe a Samurai du Montre, all this type of stuff that, um, you know, we love to play from the competitive side, or at least uh, the game wasn't exactly the greatest that year. But looking back on Docks and Samurai especially, were two fantastic competitive maps that you could play for a lot of different game modes. USS Texas was just played in Search and Destroy, and um, honestly, it was a pretty shambolic map. I don't really know anyone who actually liked it from a competitive perspective. It was just snipers all across the park. It was a really fun, like, honestly, like, playing GBs on that map was the single map that made me more frustrated than any other map I've ever played on in Call of Duty history. Now, um, maybe that's just me having a particular vengeance against this map that I don't want it back, but um, I'm probably not going to play the game anyways. Who really cares? But still, like, if they're going to choose this map over the other ones, like, um, you know, I don't know if they are, right? It's not yet confirmed. Maybe this uh, thing in the, in the game files is not exactly correct, but I just don't understand why they would want this map to come back, right? And some of the other pros are talking about it, right? As such as there's, right, you got to be joking, right? And this is the map USS Texas, if you guys aren't familiar with it. It was only a search and destroy map. It was basically, you'd have, well, both teams have had snipers on either side of the map, A-bomb, B-bomb sites, and they just run in and try to get the bomb down and use some smokes. It was honestly chaos. I don't think it played particularly well at all. The staircases up towards the top rooms were just, like, the top control rooms just didn't really make any sense. I didn't like it one bit. But, um, still, I guess they want to bring it back for some reason. What I don't quite understand is that Slash is saying that the decisions being made are obviously impressive at this point, if, of course, this does come true. But it's like, look, how are they possibly going to explain to the community that this is like a fan favorite map they're bringing back. I don't really know anyone who liked this one, to be honest. Maybe I'm biased, right, because I look from the competitive perspective. But, like, surely if you ask, like, a load of casual players who played World War II public matches, like, um, I would say that maybe more of their favorite maps would kind of be the London Dock Samurai Dumont, where the map is actually quite well balanced for not only public matches, but also, of course, competitive play. But, um, still, I guess they might say that USS Texas is a fan favorite map and bring it back as a result of that one. Kind of confusing to me. But, um, I mean, yeah, there was further reaction here from a BZ no, God, please, no. So, look, I guess for a search and destroy, this might be better than some of the maps we currently have on offer, which is kind of sad to say. It's not going to work for any of the other game modes, though. So, um, still, I'm not really sure if this does arrive and there's no London Docks, there's no Samurai Dumont. Like, um, you know, what are we going to do for the map set this year? It's tough to say because we were kind of relying on um, some new good maps coming through to replace a Bacage or something like that, which right now is not exactly in the best position. Now, um, well, as silly as our prayers have been answered, right? I thought it was a funny reply, really, from Crone. Nah, dog, they see tweets like this and ignore them. 
the 300 ones roasting them think they made a good decision. So, um, yeah, the sarcasm does not always pay off. But this also came out as well, like, um, came up from the game files. There were some other game files that suggested that subdivisions are back in business here for the ranked play system that is coming along. Complete five skill evaluation matches to get placed in a skill division of similarly skilled players. So, um, this, of course, rings very similar bells to what happened in Cold War with the ranked play system in Cold War. Now, um, of course, that wasn't really a ranked play system. You got put into a division and, um, and then, like, well, it was pretty much random whoever you were playing against. There was no ELO system. There was nothing that really determined your skill to a great degree. Now, um, of course, it wasn't completely terrible. At least ranked play existed in Cold War, but um, it was nowhere near as good as the World War II system where you had an ELO-based score that determines how good you are. If you won, it goes up. If you lose, it goes down. Now, um, this seems to be, instead of what we're getting for the World War II system, seems like we're getting a Black Ops 4 Cold War type system. As Exotic describes right here based on this tweet, but Matt Scrantz actually from Trek, who's actually going to be working on this, right? Because there were some tweets that came out a while ago between Sledgehammer and um, Trek saying, look, okay, you know, ranked play's coming out. Trek are actually going to work to help her, well, help make it, right? Now, um, you know, are they just going to copy and paste Black Ops 4 Cold War? Maybe that's what they're going to do. But um, as Matt Scrantz says, like, this is only what's been officially confirmed so far, which is like, you know, competitive modes, ranked skill divisions, visible skill ratings and rewards, which of course kind of sounded like an ELO-based system, right? Ranked skill divisions, visible skill ratings, that might indicate some sort of ELO-based number type system, which um, I think the community generally wants back. But um, I mean, still, I'm basically saying like, you know, calm down, like we're still going to deliver the goods, even though people are getting kind of frustrated with, with these kind of rumors coming out from the game file. So definitely some positive stuff from Matt Scott's of the track site here, of course, working on this, because I guess, uh, well, Sledgehammer are too busy dealing with all the other stuff that's going on in their game. Let's talk about scrims then right now. A few interesting things to discuss here. So 18 and Cracked, maybe as a result of what was said on the flank a couple of days ago, they're like, look, if you're not streaming your scrims, no organization is actually going to know how good you even are. So this is Assault, Shawnee exceeding Classic. Classic started streaming some of their matches last night up against Paris. I believe the early part of this scrim set they won pretty comfortably. Then Paris kind of took the last few maps they played. So I think it was a relatively even affair. But also, there was an interesting matchup between Optic and Boston. So of course, the new Boston team streaming absolutely everything, right? Or streaming absolutely everything that they are scrimming. Methods and Co, Capsule, Nero, and TJ being the rest of the squad. They play Optic last night. And of course, Optic, you know, they're probably going to have a bit of a break for Christmas and all this type of stuff before the new year cranks into gear. But um, it was interesting to see Boston actually win this scrim set. This map especially I thought was kind of surprising here on Berlin, where Dashi has 10 eliminations. How often do you see Dashi with 10 eliminations in a scrim map? As I say, it's scrims, it doesn't really matter all that much. I said this every single day, but we don't have actual proper tournaments to talk about, unfortunately, so this is uh, the best we have. But uh, yeah, on the other side of things, Caps on Nero, I think uh, they were really impressing a lot of people with the numbers they were putting up and how good they looked on the map. So definitely impressive stuff. I think a lot of these guys, there were definitely some questions as to whether this was going to be a good pickup. And just you're kind of thinking based on these scrim results, they're probably going to lock in this team, right? Because if, if they were getting absolutely bodied in scrims, the new Boston team, then they might make some changes because they're not officially contracted as of yet, like any of these guys officially to the Boston organization. I believe Zed said he kind of wants to get things that set in stone before the new year sometime. Now, um, this was the entire scrim recap. So Boston started off really strong here. They won the first three maps. They lost the Gavutu. They then won the Bacaj 174 to 140. Like what a crazy map that was. They, um, well, they, they played it the first time and there were some more points being scored. Just crazy how some of these maps are like nowhere near 250, right? This map's just completely crazy. And, um, and then they actually went up 5-1 before Optic won the last two maps. So 5-3 scrim sets for the Boston guys up against Optic. Definitely impressive stuff from Cap and Nero, to be honest. I think Nero especially, like, um, he was looking really solid in these scrims. So uh, good to see from those guys. Definitely seem like solid pickups, at least so far. Optic also went on to scrim surge. It was a 4-4 map count here. The first two maps, they got 100 point clubbed, actually, before they warmed up a bit and uh, kind of, uh, well, traded the rest of the series. But interesting, really, to see how Optic win a lot of the close maps, and then some of the maps they got 100 point clubs, like, um, they're the ones on the receiving end of those. So Surge definitely also looking like a solid squad. It's kind of one of these teams early on that I think has surprised a fair few people in terms of how they've performed in scrims. They had that scrim set up against FaZe quite a while ago where they 4 0 them, and now they're really mixing it up with some of these top squads as well. So um, it is cool to see. I think the competition in the league this year is going to be massive. It's really going to come down to who puts in a lot of time and who puts in a lot of effort, and I think Surge definitely have the talent on paper to make that work. And everyone seems to be getting on quite nicely with the kind of uh, accuracy, rotation, school, or whatever as Sib was talking about it being. Like, um, it seems like the vibes on that team are pretty good. They respect their leader and accuracy. They've got good coaching staff behind them as well and good general manager. So, um, yeah, I think things are going to work out quite well for that team this year. But, of course, that makes power rankings very difficult to do indeed, especially when we don't have any proper tournaments and online 2Ks and stuff like this to actually determine which of these teams might win in a tournament setting. But um, I'm sure everything will become clear as time moves onwards. This I also wanted to mention last night because there's certainly been some questions. Who's actually going to come through and cast this?
this season because Lottie seems like she might be going back to Halo straight up over there because she removed her Call of Duty, I believe, from her bio we looked at yesterday. Now, of course, Maven and Merc can imagine they're going to be back in business. I still think they will be. But um, as Maven says right here, I've got no idea what's going on. Now, um, this is, seems to be the case every single year and it's so frustrating for us as fans and I'm sure for these guys as casters as well because everything gets so last minute with them determining what their contract's going to be with Activision. I'm not sure exactly what the delay is here, but Maven basically has no contract set in Sony, has no idea like when he's going to be talked to about this, especially given the fact that it's a month's time until the actual kickoff event starts. Like you'd have thought um, now would be the perfect time. I guess maybe they'll do it in the new year after Christmas or whatever, but um, to actually get the contract set in stone to get Maven on board, right, to Maven and Merc on board and the rest of the casters to actually make sure they're casting the upcoming season. So hopefully that's the case. I don't think there's too much reason to worry right now, but um, you know, I just don't understand why it always has to take this long and why these guys can't be, yeah, I'm coming back next year, don't worry about it, lads. We got it all sorted. For now, we might not even have any casters going into next season. So just, um, you know, potentially a catalogue of errors. But, uh, you know, with any luck, these boys will be back in business. Definitely don't want them going to any other esports because they're some of the best we certainly have. Miles and Chance, of course. Like, um, hopefully they're back in business as well. I haven't really heard too much from that side of things. Definitely talking about that as well, right? Because Maven, back in the day, he used to play Halo, right? Like, um, he was a Halo player before he came into the Call of Duty scene, uh, well, several years ago now. And, um, well, anyway, Halo card concept, Lion Man's doing. He's been doing some Valorant ones. He's now been doing some Halo ones. This, um, well, it's kind of his first draft, really, here of what a formal card could potentially look like with no official stats as of yet. But just thought it was kind of nice, to be honest, really looking at some of this stuff. Just cool to see formal back in business. Seven championships in Halo. Not, um, of course, in addition to all the Call of Duty ones that he's won as well. And just to finish off with this, right, given the whole, um, well, the thought process about USS Texas coming back, as Charlie Intel says, since from a game should remaster which map for Vanguard, right? They could bring back Crash, right, from Modern Warfare. Nuketown, I don't know if they, I guess they could bring that back, but it's never been a, a game that wasn't a track game. London Docks, of course, I think most people in the competitive scene would say, yeah, bring that one back from World War II. That's fantastic for all the game modes, as long as they don't ruin it with doors and breakables and stuff, which they may well do, but we can disable those now. Shoot House, another option. But as Nate Shot said to reply, none of them normalize making better maps instead of remastering the old. I agree, that'd be nice in theory, but the reality is a lot of these developers seem to have forgotten how to make good maps, to be honest, because, um, well, we tend to look back at some of the old ones and think, wow, that'd be way better. And in fairness, in Cold War, for example, bringing back Raid and Standoff and this type of stuff probably helps this game become much better than it would have been if, like, Express and these types of maps weren't there from back in the day. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit in the like button. Tell us the YouTube gods. This is a good video. Others like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.